and the difference you're making is so inspiring. So I want to go back to the Tyler um, that was broke and down and was not the Tyler that we're seeing today. Are you sure? Good job. Yeah. You're pressing hey. your vibe. Yo, what up, guys? It's Gary Vee, and it's time for the Daily Bread. Give us our daily bread. I want the whole basket. Cause I'm a hustle till I get it or I'm in a casket. Passionate for providing value in every way. Not cashing in for providing value every day. Paying it forward. Right thing, I'll do it till I'm dead. I hope you're hungry cause it's time for the Daily Bread. Hey guys. Welcome to Living with Passion. My name is Sunny Perry, and I am so excited tonight to bring to you Tyler Harris. The reason why I created Weekly Motivators is because I wanted to be the conduit, conduit to bring to you different people who have found their passion, which has led to their purpose. Now, everybody has a story behind their passion, story behind their journey, and I'm here to help you hear those stories. So tonight, I'm bringing on Tyler Harris, who went from being broke to a millionaire in 3.5 years. You're not going to want to miss his story. So guys, I'm going to... Five years. So mad. You're not going to want to miss his story. So guys, I'm going to bring him on right now. Who are going to want to watch tonight. Hey, we did it. What's up? Tyler, I'm so excited to have you on. I've been watching you for months and um, just there's a whole group of you, just amazing people who have come together, changing people's lives. And um, Tyler, uh, we kind of want to go through right now. He's, are you live on Instagram too? I am live on Instagram, which is at Tyler Harris page. So I am live on Instagram. Let me, let me show them to you. That way they can see you here. Hey guys. Perfect. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> So perfect. So Tyler, I've been dying to have you on. Your schedule is insane. I see that some <laughs> nights you're really sweet sleeping and the difference you're making is so inspiring. So I want to go back to the Tyler um, that was broke and down and was not the Tyler that we're seeing today. Are you sure? <laughs> I'm sure. There's, there's so many people and you know this. This is why you're doing what you do, I'm sure, that we're in that spot that are hopeless, just and don't and have no path so first off i want to say thank you for having me um i've been watching these for a long time i know joseph was on uh, a couple of weeks ago and uh that was awesome watching him and that was an incredible um uh episode that you had but uh, i'm super excited to be on here because you have been consistent and that's what i love to see because a lot of these things will pop up and then they'll disappear but you're Shows have been super consistent. It's always bringing tons of value. I'm not able to always watch live, but I always watch the replay. So it's awesome, awesome stuff. Um, but yeah, to go back, I mean, it's just been three and a half, four years. And it was a dark, dark time um, for me. I had gone through uh, a really bad divorce. Um, I had gone through a really bad termination from a career that I was really excelling in. And those two kind of hit very close to the same time. It kind of spiraled me uh, out of control, um, not in a stereotypical sense of like, you know, drugs and like stuff like that, but just, just my confidence was gone. Uh, my confidence was gone. My, I was depressed. I got out of shape during that period of time. And what happened was I went through about a two year period of time where I was just completely content with feeling sorry for myself and, and even more content with other people feeling sorry for me as well. I was kind of just walking around playing the victim, like, Oh, woe is me. You know, I got terminated from this job that I was crushing it. Um, you know, my wife had an affair, like, Oh, these things all happened to me. Like, look, like feel sorry for me kind of thing. Um, and it just had me stuck. I was just playing stuck. And then finally had this kind of realization moment. Um, for me, it was the biggest defining moment of my life and realizing that, uh, that I was playing the victim and then realizing and taking personal responsibility and realizing that every single one of those things that had happened to me, and there were many others, but all of that stuff was my fault. It was 100% my fault. You are exactly where you're supposed to be because you got yourself there. And and I'm super empathetic to any situations where pe things like happen to, to people like abuse and all these things that we're hearing so much more about now. 
that's not your fault, right? But it is your fault that it's 20 years later and it's still controlling you. And so the biggest encouragement out of that came from realizing that if I got myself into that situation, if I got myself out of shape, I got myself in this depressed, just lonely, terrible place, then I can get myself out of it. Um, yeah. And some mentors came into my life, Joseph being one of them who's on here right now. Um, Joseph and, and our two other business partners came into my life. And really, at that time, honestly, they saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. Um, they kind of breathed life back into me. They breathed confidence back into me. And a lot of that came from this fear of going all in again and that it would be taken away from me. Um, this fear of trying 100%, putting all effort into anything, career, and have that being taken again, into a relationship, have that being taken away from me again. Uh, and it was just, I was just stuck. Uh, but they began to build confidence back into me and then plugged me into a system with the business that they had developed at the time um, to where I could just go out, implement what I had, which was hard work ethic, and then just put my head down and, and see results quickly and then build upon that. And that's what we've done over the last three and a half years. And it's just been a life-changing period of time for me that a lot of people don't get to experience so rapidly. And so now carrying forward, once I've gone through that life change, now because of those mentors that came into my life, making such a gigantic impact on what happened over the next three and a half years, I wanted to pay that forward and try to be that for somebody else. And whether that's to a large degree or whether it's the smallest little, just one thing that they heard off of a post or after at, on a Facebook live at 10 o'clock Eastern time here um, that made a little um, uh, impact that, that caused them to pivot uh, or caused them to take action or caused them to get out of that same type of rut. And I feel like it's almost like a responsibility uh, that I have at this point. It's not like a guilt type of responsibility, but um, just a responsibility that I feel that I owe uh, to someone that's in the exact same position that I was in three and a half years ago. I love your story. And there's a couple points that I want to hit that you brought up. Um, first being the people that you surrounded yourself with being at such a low point. Um, I had just heard recently that if you look at the last four text messages from the four different people, and if they're not uplifting, inspiring, and trying to motivate you to live a different life, then you need to get rid of some of your, some of the people Absolutely. that you surround. Um, I've noticed that in my own personal life, it's so important who you have around you because it's, it's crazy. Cause even your friends will start um, being the naysayer, especially when you're stepping out doing lives like this, it's yeah. not easy no. to get out there and go live and to broadcast your feelings and your emotions and put out there what you're feeling. And that's something that we're called to do. Not everybody's called to be in front of a camera, yep. but that's your calling to help people. Um, Absolutely. And, 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 be, and the, the reason that those guys like Joseph and, and our other business partners, Nathan and Jeff, the reason they were able to do that for me is because that someone had done it for them. Um, yeah. They had done it for each other and they had gotten themselves out of terrible situations and had had that transformation take place. And it quickly became, it quickly went from being about what they could create to what they could create in others. And that's when they kind of were able to take a deep breath and, and look up and look around and say, okay, who else can I help? I just happened to be in their line of vision <laughs> when they, when they, when they finally lifted their head up and, and I'm forever grateful for that. And, and again, I think it's that chain, right? It's the chain of like someone came into their lives and helped them. They came into my life and helped me. Now I can come into someone else's life and help them. And it could be something as simple as this Facebook Live or this Instagram Live uh, that somebody's watching right now that's like, crap, that's me. Like I'm playing the victim. I never heard anybody say it that way. Like that's me. Like I got to get myself out of this. And it's just something that simple. Well, and I love, there's, I love what you say when you say, be the victim because everybody has something happen to them. Everybody makes a good choice or a bad choice or choices were happen to the, happen to them. Um, but it's our choice not to live in that moment. And I love how you hit on that. Um, when I was talking to Joseph, there was something that he hit on that I, I'm sure that you've done at the same time, reading books, constant motivational videos, um, in, immersing himself in environments of growth. He wasn't sitting around watching mindless television and sitting around doing things not to help him grow. So can you tell us a little bit of your growth and what you immersed yourself in? I think so much of this is just auditing the things that you're letting into your life. And for me, the main part of that is fleeing from negativity, like fleeing yeah. from it. 
Uh, my wife makes fun of me a lot of times because I don't watch the news yep. <laughs> like ever, like ever, ever. Um, there'll be like gigantic, like world events going on. And I'm like, no clue. Like I, I, I joke around and tell people about that. Um, the eclipse that happened, you know, a few months back that I didn't realize it until like that morning that it was happening that afternoon. <laughs> and, and, but for me, it's, it's that it's to that extreme. I hardly even watch TV quite frankly, but definitely not the news because it's all negative. Um, yep. if, when I'm in my car, I'm listening to podcasts or I'm listening uh, to, to audio books or I'm maybe watching a YouTube video, which I don't endorse doing. It's very not safe. So don't do that, kids um, <laughs> or adults. But I'm constantly, constantly auditing the things that I'm letting in. And unfortunately, and fortunately, but unfortunately, that also means the people that you're surrounding yourself with. Um, mm -hmm. Are they lifting you up? Or are they allowing you to stay complacent? Are they allowing you to stay comfortable? Um, and then just trying to constantly elevate the people that you're um, being influenced by uh, is, is a huge uh, aspect of that. Um, but for me, as cheesy as this sounds, and like looking back, it sounds so cheesy. Uh, but the first entire year of that transformation, um, one, of my, one of our business partners, uh, Nathan Wells, gave me uh, the book, The Secret. And he gave it to me, like the audio, like it was literally like a CD. Like it wasn't even, it wasn't even like on my iPhone. It was like a CD. And I had that CD in my car and it was the only thing I listened to for an entire year. The reason I say it's wow. cheesy because it's like the most like Mickey Mouse version of the law of attraction there is, but still having that being the key thing that I spend a ton of time in my car. So I listened to it over and over and over to where I almost had it memorized at one point. Um, and, and, it not only was that positive source of information going in, but it was also keeping me cognizant of the other sources that when I wasn't in my car, that I was very, very, very attuned with to the point where I would literally like physically remove myself from conversations. Like if I had a group of people and all of a sudden it got negative, I would just literally just turn and just walk away. <laughs> and so it was that extreme, but it's just for me, uh, it was that necessary because it was that critical of a time in my life where I knew that I was at this very, very fragile moment in time that any influence mm -hmm. could take me out of the trajectory that I was on. And that was the last thing that I wanted to have happen because things were happening very fast and they were progressing very fast. And I just did not want to lose that momentum. Well, that's so important. And there was a, a couple of points I wanted to hit because you were going through such a dark time in your life mm -hmm. and I the pain and you know the confusion and probably trying to figure out who is Tyler Harris. Yep. Now when you said that you know um, Joseph and Nathan um, they they encouraged you and they were there. They didn't let you be pitiful. It sounds like it sounds like you could go to them and you could go to them with your pain and you could be authentic with them. Mm -hmm. They weren't going to let you be pitiful. They made you powerful. They did, and it's because they had been through that, if not worse. Like they had been, they had been there. Um, and so they, 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 I mean, almost aggressively <laughs> when I would bring anything to them, they're like, and okay, all right, well, let's, let's move on. Like I can remember, like, I mean, I was crushing it in our business and I would come back, I'd be on the road for four days straight and I'd come back and they'd say, you know, how many life insurance policies did you sell this week? And I'd say, man, I sold, you know, a hundred life insurance policies. They're like, how many people did you see? I'm like, I saw 300 people. And they're like, that's freaking terrible. Like your close ratio was 33%. Like that's horrible. Like you should have sold 275 policies. And I'm like, okay, crap. Like, and at that point, like I was just like, I was just going to outwork everyone. Like I hadn't refined all my skills yet. And I was literally just willing to just out hustle everyone. Like if you could close nine out of 10 and I could close three out of 10, I'll just go see four times the people and beat you. Yeah. But every time I would come back, it was always this reality check. And anytime that I would come back with any type of, um, comment based on things that had gone through it was literally it was just that it was like and okay like all right like great this is something that happened to me let's move on like there's just there was zero time for dwelling and and that was it for me when I, I love your story of your journey so you started out you lost your job Um, so Tyler, so whenever I have somebody come on, I love, I love it when they leave a quote because quotes really speak to me and I'm thinking that it's something that I'm sure you have a million of them, but to, for all the viewers, um, 
what quote would you say that they should encompass their world around? The first thing that I'll say is there could never have been a better setup for people to go to your Facebook than on this Instagram, because literally the second that you ended that question, Instagram stopped. And so that's like the best thing I've ever, ever, ever experienced. So I just had to say that and, sh and save this. <laughs> so hopefully we'll be getting a bunch so of traffic. Fun. So one of the most important things for me um, is a quote that I stole this first part of the quote from someone. And I honestly don't know who it's from. Um, I really don't, but I added the second part to it. So I can just tell us, say that it's my quote. Um, and that is that every successful person has a painful story. The part that I added is, will your painful story have a successful ending? And I think ah. there's a movement right now that's starting to happen and it needs to continue of transparency um, and authenticity and, and people really seeing what's, what's going on behind, you know, the, the filters and the, in the um, highlight reels. Uh, but every single person that's successful, they've gone through bankruptcies, they've gone through divorces, they've gone through abuse, they've gone through all these things. And the ones that you haven't heard about, they're just still bottling it up and they're still hiding it. Um, and I'm going to start getting a lot more into some of my stuff um, here in the next uh, couple of weeks on the episodes. We've got some stuff planned out um, and some stuff that I've been nervous to talk about. Um, just some stuff that I've dealt with in my life. And, but I think it's going to be the most impactful stuff that ever comes out of the vlog. Um, and so that it's just that like every successful person has a painful story, but then turning it back around on people and in, in how they take action on the fact that you've got a painful story. Well, great. Well, will it have a successful ending? Um, I think it's extremely empowering.